The Nissan ENV200 Evalia 7S is Nissan's other passenger car F didn't know they had a second one. That may be because this one's based on a commercial vehicle, it's a 7-seat MPV based on the ENV200 electric van but whether you knew of it or not it's just had an upgrade time to coincide with the launch of the third generation Leaf at just over 4.5 meters in length and 1.8 meters tall the Avalia, is ostensibly an electrically powered take on the commercial convert people mover, so a zero emissions alternative to a Ford Grand Tour Neo Connect or Citroen Blingo it hasn't been through a renewal process as thorough as the Leafs so it's 107 bhp electric motor its chassis and its suspension stay more or less as they were but the big news is the inclusion of a new 40 kilowatt hours drive battery coming in to replace the old 24 kilowatt hours one but which is no larger than the old one and therefore fits into the same space as the old one did the difference that makes is a 60 percent improvement in battery range which rises to 174 miles on the outgoing ned test cycle or 125 miles by the new wl LTP combined test measure the Avalia's smoothed over panels and large rounded features make it look a bit like it belongs in an animated movie by Pixar particularly so in the white of our test car quirky looking might be how you'd describe it if it were yours but then lucky for Nissan this isn't a part of the new car market where buyers are sensitive to such things being van derived and based on a product almost a decade old. The Avalia has a cabin that's at once basic and quite cheap feeling which is no great criticism though since it's just the way cars like this are you get a digital instrument screen which looks small and a bit antiquated by the standards of the latest passenger car digital instrument displays though it's easy enough to read up front you sit in a driving position that feels slightly compromised being very upright and positioning you close to the pedals but also at a distance from the steeply raked steering wheel you feel frankly like you're driving something in which the available Loading length behind your seat is more important than the passenger's comfort in front of it which of course is entirely true trouble is other comparable cars don't make that commercial vehicle link plane in quite the same way in the Avalia version though instead of a low ad be behind the driver there are three roomy second row seats accessed via sliding side doors and behind them two third row chairs that fold and stow upwards against the sides of the boot when not in use the third row seats are a bit fiddly to manhandle and don't offer particularly generous legroom but they're more spacious than in some so-called seven seaters and even when in place they leave enough space for a decent haul of bags and small cases in the boot with all the seats folded meanwhile nissan states that you can squeeze in three full-sized mountain bikes having left their front wheels attached and longer stuff two kayaks ballistic missiles railway locomotives and the like to guess if you fold the front passenger seat down as well this is certainly a car with the potential to move both people and cargo in plentiful supply realistic expectations are required to appreciate some if not quite all of the characteristics of the EMV 200's driving experience that there's plenty of low down low speed torque available from that electric motor however is absolutely plain the car picks up pace from urban speeds with gusto much more in fact than you'd get from an economy diesel 7 seater though its performance feels less and less assertive the farther you go beyond 50 miles per hour by the time you close on the car's electronically limited top speed of 76 miles per hour it feels considerably less strong than its combustion engine equivalent might a small comfort perhaps to think that at least it won't be ENV. 200 van drivers rushing up behind you well beyond the national speed limit in the outside lane of the motorway the other drawback of traveling at motorway speeds in this car is the remarkable amount of wind noise intrusion it suffers from having a particularly upright cabin profile large door mirrors and commercial grade door seals not intended for the last word in refinement the Avalia would give you the impression you were driving through a storm for scale even when conditions were clement the car's ride is equally rudimentary with leaf springs and a torsion beam suspending the rear of the car it handles smooth roads adequately enough but is easily upset by fairly low amplitude bumps and generally makes life less comfortable for those traveling in the rear than you'd ideally like handling is more decent with a way to drive battery carried down low the car manages its mass fairly tidily around sharpish bends though the tricky driving position would make it such a demanding car to physically set about if you were in a hurry that you'd be unlikely to be in a hurry for very long as for real world range probably the big question for anyone genuinely considering whether this car might fit into their family's life it's certainly markedly improved but perhaps not by enough to make the Avalia widely suitable as a private by while a 106 mile range was claimed for the outgoing version this was by the soon to be replaced Ned Club test driving cycle in mixed real world use electric range was more like 80 miles which plainly wasn't enough 
for plenty of van drivers and MPV customers alike the new version's 40 kWh battery delivers a genuine range in the region of 110-120 miles our test was indicating just over 200 km of available battery range at full charge which proved a broadly realistic estimate as our test route went on. Given the car's also charged a Modi C fast charge compliant that would make it usable on short range trips and occasional well planned longer runs, probably not quite justifiable as a family's bigger primary mode of transport. Though the ENV 200 has sold in very small numbers as a passenger car since 2014, and on this evidence will probably continue to do so even after the UK Treasury's sales incentive, it's still likely to cost 25% more than an equivalent petrol or diesel engined MPV rival if prices on the outgoing car are a reliable guide to those of the new one which were to be confirmed as these words were written and while a private buyer could recoup much of that extra cost on running cost savings this still wouldn't be an easy car to run in many ways the appeal of a utility vehicle like this is bound up after all in how unconditionally practical it is and there's little that would feel practical about waiting at the motorway services for an hour for a fast charge to finish while mud spattered and exhausted on your way home from a family mountain biking expedition still that should be much of an obstacle in the way of the wider success of the ENV. 200 expect to see an increasing number of these serving as last mile city delivery vans in European capitals that are currently setting up central zero emissions zones London Paris Madrid and others to be phased in from 2019 the car should also be popular as a seven seater taxi in many of the same cities where new emissions restrictions come into play there is clearly a market for the all electric seven seater then and while it won't be the passenger car market for this particular example I'm not sure how much Nissan should care Europe will be crying out for the ENV 200 within a couple of years whether MPV owners know much about the car or not Nissan ENV 200 Evalia 7S where Tenerife on sale TBA price TBA engine AC synchronous electric motor power 107 bhp torque 187 pounds foot gearbox single speed direct drive curb weight 1689 kilograms top speed 76 miles per hour 0 to 62 miles per hour 14.0 seconds drive battery lithium ion 40 kilowatt hours 360 v charging time 21.5 hours 10 amp 7.5 hours 32 amp 40 to 60 minutes charge mo quick charge to 80 percent claimed electric range 174 miles net 125 miles wltp combined co2 na rivals na